What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Triple Cap here, and today we're going to be talking about how to add these awesome GPS data gauges to your FPV flight footage. It's really not that complicated at all, so if you're ready, let's get into it right now. Okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is turn on your GPS on your GoPro. You turn on your GoPro from the main screen, swipe down, tap Preferences, scroll to Regional, tap GPS, and turn GPS on. Once you've got GPS turned on, before you start recording, you want to make sure this little white icon is on. That's letting you know that the link to the GPS satellites is good and you're ready to go. It could take a couple minutes for that to connect. If you're in like a wooded area, it might not even connect. It's really best used in open, air, open areas and open skies. It's very important that you wait for that little white icon icon to be lit up it'll be grayed out like these other ones are before that as soon as it's lit up you're good to go you can start hitting record get out there hit the sky rip it up as soon as you're done ripping we'll go from there on the next steps that you need to take in order to get these awesome little gauges on your footage so go fly have fun and meet me back here in just a second all right, now that you've got your footage, go ahead and save the files to your computer so that you can upload them into the software. Once you've got all of your footage imported, you'll want to go to Dashware.net. I'll put a link in the description, but it's pretty simple. Dashware.net. You want to go over to their download tab and agree to all of their terms and everything. Hit their EULA, their terms, and their privacy policy. Click download now and save this somewhere that you can access it. Once you have that downloaded, go ahead and... Um, get it installed, hit the setup key, accept all the terms, go th run through the process and get everything installed. Once that's done, there's another step that you've got to do that's kind of important because the gauges don't seem to work unless you do this. The next thing you're going to want to do is go into your C drive, go to program files, go to GoPro, go to GoPro desktop app. You're going to look down here for, uh, what is it, telemetry data right here. As soon as you get to telemetry data, double click on that, then you're going to go into data profiles. You're going to look in here and you're going to find the, the file that represents your camera. If you've got a Hero 7 Black, this is the one you're going to want. Copy that file right there. Just right click and copy it. And then you're going to want to go to the directory where you downloaded your or you installed your software. For me, it's program files, dashware. You're going to want to click on double click on data tool. Then you're going to want to go to data profiles. And in here, you're going to want to paste that file into this directory. Once you've got that file copied over, we can go ahead and open up Dashware. Once Dashware is open, go to File, go to New Project. Uh, make sure that GoPro Template Imperial is selected. You, if you want to name the project, you can name it. And once you've got that, hit OK. And this loads up the next screen, which has the gauges, the GoPro gauges and everything already on there. You're going to want to go to the little plus sign over here. Hit plus to add your video. Wherever your videos are saved, go ahead and grab them. And let's see, uh, which one's mine? This one here. Go ahead and grab that. It'll start extracting the data. All right, and once that data is there, it'll ask you to select a data profile. And from here, you want to go to, not this one, you want to hit the drop-down menu, and you want to scroll down until you see GoPro. Once you see GoPro, just click on that, and everything else should be good. You can click Add. And this imports the data that's embedded into the video. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Now, once that's all imported and all the data is there, you're free to move stuff around. You can grab your speedometer here. You can move that around wherever you want it. You can move your G-Force gauge wherever you want it, or you can delete it altogether if you don't want it. I took mine off. You can also resize these and make them bigger if you like. Um, you can do whatever you want. Lay it out however you like. You'll see this gauge over here that shows your altitude. Everything's kind of small. I like to make it a little bit bigger. Probably not this big, but a little bit bigger. From here, you can play around, set it up however you want it. You can, If you feel like it, you can go in here to your gauge toolbox. And you'll notice all these other cool gauges. And some of them are related. Some of them work. Some of them don't. Um, they're all pretty cool. There's a lot of them, actually, that are related to UAVs. But some of the information in them doesn't work for some reason. You can play around with it. And maybe you can get it to work. I don't know. I could not get half the stuff to work. Like, for example, here's the... Um, this is a UAV one. You've got speed. You've got your vertical speed. You've got how the distance you've traveled. Um, I'm not sure why that's not working there. You've got your altitude, and this altitude is not like 
from ground level, it's from sea level. And I'm up here in the hills, so my my altitude's a little higher. Uh, you've got your latitude, your longitude. I'm assuming all that's correct because it does change. But some of the gauges work, and then some of them don't. Like, there's some that that don't work at all. But feel free to play around, set it up however you like it. Once you've got everything set up and you've got it arranged the way you like it and you're pretty satisfied, you've got two options basically, maybe more, but two that I'm going to talk about. Number one, you can you're done, you're good to go. You can um, set your starting points. Like for example, mine starts somewhere right in right in there, I think. Yeah, mine starts like right in there. You can move the start to there and I think it stops right about there and you can go ahead if you're happy with everything and you want it just like this you don't plan on doing any major edits or anything you're you can go ahead hit create video basically all this stuff is already set for you I don't think you can change any of that I usually just keep this all set on auto I don't really change anything all I do is put it where I want it I'll browse to wherever I want to put it and that's about it and go ahead and hit create video. It'll take a few minutes depending on your computer. And once it's done, you can you're either you can upload it to YouTube or you can bring it straight into your editing software, whatever you want to do. Now, there's a second option that you can also do. And it's what I prefer to do. What I prefer to do is to add a green screen. I don't want this video on there. I want to have an overlay that I can bring into my editing software and I can put it on top of my video. And the way you do that is a little tricky. You've got to add a new gauge, which I've already added it here. It's a green screen. You've got to add a green screen. But I'm going to tell you guys how to do that. All right, so if you want to add a green screen to make it to where you don't have the video in the background, you go over to our gauge toolbox. You click the plus sign to add a new one. You can name it green screen or whatever you want. I've already got it in here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Green screen. Whoops. Let's get that right. Green screen 2. Hit OK. And from here, you're going to go over here to where it says Components. You're going to hit the plus, and you're going to pick Build Rectangle. Click on that and hit Add. And it's going to put a little box right here. Double click on that box. From here, you're going to want to put your size. If you're doing uh, 1920 by 1080, that's your video size. Or if you're doing uh, 27K, whatever, whatever your video size, put that in over here. So set that to your size. And then pick your fill color. You can pick green. You can pick any color you want, really. But, you know, it's a green screen. So you want to make sure that the colors that you're going to be keying out don't interfere with any of the gauges. So if you've got green on your gauges, you might want to use a different color. Hit OK. That's it. Hit OK. You don't have to. I know it doesn't look like it. Look right over here. But that's fine. Don't even worry about that. From there, go to File, Save Gauge. Then you can close it you'll go back to your gauge toolbox and it'll add it in here. I've already got one here, but here's the new one that I just added. All you have to do is pull this over here, drag it on top of your video, line it up to where it covers the whole video. Go back to project tab and click on your green screen. Like you want to make sure it's behind, like right now it's covering up all the layers. So just bring that to the top. You can use the, any of the arrows to do that. I use this one because it moves it all the way to the top. And now you can see that there's a green screen there and all the gauges are there. The video is not there. The problem with this is it's still, when it's exporting, it still encodes the video in the background. But that's okay. It's going to make it take a little longer. There apparently is no way to turn off the video without losing the data. I don't really know why. You'd think it'd be pretty simple to just hide the video. It would make exporting the video with just the overlay that very so much faster but I don't know you've got to do it this way once you've got all of that done you've got your green screen there you can go ahead hit file create video and browse to wherever you want to save it and hit create video one thing I will mention before you while you're exporting this video is to take note of the start time and the end time that's going to be kind of important in order to sync it up to your footage when you bring it into the editor so take note of the start time and the end time. Those are pretty important. All right, and once your overlay green screen is done rendering, bring it into your editing software. Um, make sure you get it synced up with your footage properly using the timestamp that we took note of earlier. And once you have it in there, go ahead and do your green screen, use your key or whatever key. Or I'm using Ultra Key. 
as soon as I click on the thing, boom, my footage is there, my overlay is there, and you are good to go. And then go ahead and edit as you normally would, however you would. Your gauges are there, all your speed, everything, your altitude, your flight path, it's all there. Everything is good to go, and you can export your videos with the gauges overlaid on top of them. Congratulations, you did it. One more thing I want to mention is this software, Dashware. It's pretty neat. If you want to mess around with these other gauges, by all means, I mean, it's got all kinds of different gauges that do different things. There's several that are made for UAV specific. If you double click on them, it lets you come in here and you can actually modify any of this stuff. You can pick different data types. Play around with it, have some fun, make some cool stuff. It's real. This software is actually really, really neat. And if you can figure it out, then that's awesome. I've played with it for maybe an hour earlier today and just enough to get the gauges on there like I wanted. But I realize there is so much you can do with the software if you, if you can figure it out. And it's just going to take some time to figure it out. But anyways, guys, that's it. That's all I have for you right now. That's how you add the GPS data from your GoPro onto your video footage and display it in some really cool gauges. And one thing I did do that's pretty cool that I will point out, it's like a bonus step. Here, let's just delete that mask real quick. But I went ahead on Google Maps and I got a screenshot of the area I was flying and I put it underneath this flight path. I thought that was a pretty cool representation to show where I'm flying exactly. And um, I don't know, that's just something that's pretty neat. That's something I did extra. Basically, you just get the picture off of Google Images, just snip it, crop it, bring it into your editing software, put it underneath the overlay, and bam, you have a map showing a little bit better graphically where your flight path was. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I don't do a lot of tutorials. I don't know if you could tell, but I was all over the place. Hopefully, I made some sense out of it, and hopefully you learned something. Play around with the software. Have fun. And that's going to wrap it up for me, guys. Until next time, happy flying. I'll talk to you in the next video. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, and I will catch you in the next one. Caps out.